John chapter number 5 begins, verse number 1, saying, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting, for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the trembling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty-eight years. I'm sure in thirty-eight years he wondered when the Lord was going to show up. Hmm. goes on to say when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case how did he know he's the Lord hmm. he saith unto him now pay attention to this phrase brother Clint I didn't know you was going to sing this song and you didn't know I was going to preach on this song but the Lord said, Wilt thou be made whole? Hmm? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step it down before me. Notice the Lord didn't ask him if he wanted to go to the pool. Can I say a lot of times the Lord has the prescription for what ails us, but too many times we've already made up our mind what it's going to take. And we're not listening to what the Lord says. We find that in verse number 8, the Bible said, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good singing, the good choir singing. Thank you for our young people. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, for their faithfulness. I thank you, Lord, for their desire to sing and their desire to serve you. Lord, they sure are a blessing to me. Thank you for them. I thank you for these that have assembled themselves this morning on this nasty morning. And Lord, we're certainly glad we serve a God, regardless if it's sunshine or rain, you're still on the throne. And God, you do all things well, and you know exactly what we stand in need of. And Lord, we're glad that you're always right on time. Lord, you're not always on our time, you're on your time. And Lord, I pray you'd give us strength and faith to depend and wait upon the Lord. Now I pray for the next few minutes you'd bless the reading of the Word of God, and I pray that, Lord, you'd help these thy people. We pray that, Lord, you would elevate us to higher spiritual plateaus than we've ever uh, dawn before and I pray that Lord you'd open our eyes and our hearts uh, and Lord you would bless even on a rainy day you'd show forth your handiwork and God you'd do great work in our midst this morning I certainly do pray if there be any amongst us today who's unsaved lost without the Lord never called upon Jesus and ask him to save them God I pray today would be the day of their salvation I pray for those that are saved but living beneath their privileges as a child of God. I pray today that, Lord, you would break through and, God, uh, they'd see the importance of living a Christian life in this wicked world. Uh, Lord, I pray for everyone that has a need, whether it's a physical need or spiritual need. Uh, Lord, somebody may be waiting on a prayer to be answered. I pray today they'd get some comfort, they'd get some help from the message and from the Word of God May you highly be exalted in our midst. May all the praise and preeminence go to thee. And God will thank you and praise you for what you do. Use this unworthy vessel now. We'll thank you again for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. We ask it all. Amen. Amen. As a way of introduction, I want you to notice uh, there was a place. Uh, can I say we are... Uh, drawn to a place just outside of Jerusalem uh, uh, called Bethesda, which has five porches and a pool. Uh, and at this place, uh, uh, we find uh, uh, there are some folks that have a need. Uh, can I say that it was, was a specific place? Uh, 
Can I say the Lord is always interested in specific places in our life. And today he has chosen this specific place for this specific message to help those who are in attendance today. Friend, if you've got a need, it can be met in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, many times he's just waiting on us uh, uh, to respond when he comes by our way. We see there is a place. Uh, I want you to notice there is a people. Uh, uh, the Bible said in verse 3 uh, that there was a great multitude of impotent folk. Uh, uh, there is a people there uh, who have a need that is greater beyond their own capability. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I know the night that the Lord came by my way, I could not save myself. Uh, 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 I could have tried everything uh, uh, that this world has to offer. Uh, I could have tried to work my way in. I could have tried to fake my way in. Uh, I could have done any number of things uh, and I'd still been lost without the Lord. Uh, I was impotent. Uh, I had no strength in my own to save my never dying soul. Uh, 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 listen, uh, there are people that have needs. Uh, in this building today, there are people who have needs. Uh, there may be lost people here. Uh, there may be struggling people here. Uh, there may be people that have financial needs. Uh, there may be people that have physical but, uh, needs for their body. Uh, there are people who may have mental needs. Uh, I don't know what your need is, uh, but we're in this place uh, and we're this people, uh, but we serve a living God uh, who's well able to take care of every need. Uh, we see the, pe the place, we see the people, but I want you to see the picture that is displayed in these verses. We find in verse number one, there is a feast. It said, now, or after this, there was a feast of the Jews. This was the Passover feast. That's very important. Pay attention to that. The Jews had several celebrations and several festivals, uh, but nothing was like the Passover feast. The Passover feast is where uh, a sacrificial lamb was slain. Uh, its blood was shed. Uh, and if everything was done properly in accordance to the word of God, uh, the sins of the people of Israel were pushed back for another year. Uh, that had just taken place, the Passover feast. Uh, when the Lord saw uh, the blood of the lamb, he would pass over them. Uh, we find there was a feast, the Passover feast. Notice the sheep market in verse number two it says that at jerusalem by the sheep market can i say the sheep market was by the sheep gate can i say the sheep gate is where they let in brother donald the sacrificial lamb that would pay for the sins of those people or push back the sins of those people for another year so we find right by the sheep gate where the sacrificial lamb comes through uh, uh, to be used at this feet, uh, we find that, my dear friends, there's a pool. Notice what it says. The sheep market a pool. Can I say that pool was not like Coney Island? That pool was not for recreation. That pool is what you and I would think of as a community bath. It was for cleansing. Isn't it amazing that right by where the lamb had to go, uh, there's a place for cleansing. Uh, I'm glad when the lamb came by me, Brother Clint, uh, I got cleansed from my sin. Uh, I bless the Lord. Well, notice some other things. Uh, notice uh, that this all transpires in a place called Bethesda. Can I say uh, the term Bethesda means house of mercy? And I'm glad at the church house that night when the lamb passed by me and I got cleansed, I was shown mercy. Uh, uh, I didn't get what I deserved. Uh, I deserved hell. What I got was mercy. Uh, notice not only mercy we find. Uh, and uh, 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 in Bethesda, it had five porches. Five is always the number of grace. Not only did I get mercy, Brother James, that night I got grace. Uh, hallelujah. I got the unmerited favor of God. Uh, I couldn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. Uh, but God granted me grace that night that he cleansed me. Uh, mm, notice the folks that were there. The Bible says they were impotent folk, blind, halt, and withered. 
Hmm? Could I say everybody that was there either were diseased or disabled? Hmm? They were helpless in their own accord. Hmm? Can I say the night I got saved, I had a disease that there was no cure for? There was no vaccine for it? No doctor could even have the technology or the brain power to even be able to comprehend what it would take to cure my disease. Say, what disease did you have? I had a sin disease. Hmm? I was born under sin. I was sold out to sin. Sin owned me. I was chained to sin. I was bound by sin. Sin was going to drag me off into hell. But that night the Lamb passed by me. I got cleansed from my sin. Washed white as wool. Hey, the Master broke the chains of sin. I'm now longer, no longer under the condemnation of sin. I've been set free. Mercy and grace was met in my life. Uh, and I bless the Lord uh, hallelujah he knew exactly what I needed uh, can I say everybody there was there hoping for a miracle can I say the greatest miracle that's ever been performed is the miracle of salvation when a holy God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood uh, to become the propitiation or the means to cleanse us from our sin uh, and that sinners uh, when they come to Jesus uh, they come lost, they come tainted they come wicked, they become they come vile uh, but when they come to him uh, and call out in repentance and faith uh, he takes that precious blood that he shed uh, and applies it to their lives uh, and saves them uh, and changes them uh, and adopts them into the family of God uh, they once were beggars uh, now they belong to the king uh, what a blessing for the greatest miracle of all that sinners could be saved from their sin uh, can I say that in this text we find in verse number 4 that one time a year, an angel would come and trouble the water. And the first one in the pool got healed. That troubled water, my dear friends, is a picture of when the Lord starts presenting himself to us as sinners. And we start getting troubled about our sin. You see, sinners do what they do because that's what sinners do. They sin. And as long as they go left unchecked and are never told there's a way out of their sin, they'll just keep sinning. But once they come face to face with the fact that they're a sinner and that Jesus died for their sin uh, and he can save them from their sin uh, and they start realizing that they're in enmity with God uh, and their sin's going to take them to hell uh, but there is a way to pay for their sin uh, it starts troubling their waters uh, they start realizing uh, uh, there's a different way uh, and which way should they go uh, we find the troubled water represents conviction can I say that it also mentions that there's an angel that comes and troubles the waters that angel's a picture of the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost is the one that began to trouble you about your sin, uh, began to draw you to Jesus, uh, it was the Holy Ghost that let you know that you were lost in your lost estate uh, thanks be unto God for him, huh and then notice that once a year, once the waters were troubled, the first one that stepped in got made whole. Now, I was reading some goofy commentary. And by goofy, I mean goofy. I'm talking should apply for Walt Disney World. I'm talking goofy. But Doug, this goofy moron said, because they were by the sheep gate and the sacrificial lamb went there, that somehow when... Uh, uh, the high priest washed off the blood and washed off from the laver that it was dumped into that pool and the first one in that that water mixed with that blood would penetrate the pores of their life and that's what's brought healing there you go. wasn't that a blessing yeah. let me help you with something the blood of Jesus Christ did not literally touch you to save you 
the blood of Jesus Christ, every drop of it is in a fountain before the throne of God in glory. Uh, and you and I that are lost, that come to Jesus by faith, uh, that blood is ceremoniously applied to our lives uh, and washes us from our sin. Uh, it's faith in the work of Christ that cleanses us from our sin. It's faith in that shed blood. There's a song, I love the song except one line in it. It talks about being in the family of God. And I love the song until it talks about His royal blood flows through my veins. No, it don't. Uh, I still got the tainted, sorry, no good Adam blood flowing through my veins. If His blood flowed through my veins, I'd never sin again. Mm -mm. Uh, some of these songwriters, are, they just need to read the Bible. Uh, they mean well. But Kenzie, they're just crippled too high for crutches, you know? They just can't figure it out. Huh? But we see where an individual steps in and he gets made whole. That's a picture of an individual's conversion. I don't know who's been saved here the longest. They just got in first. Can I say you? It's a picture that you can get in when your water gets troubled. You don't have to wait on anybody else to get in. You can personally be converted from your sins. Uh, when God reveals to you a, that you're a sinner uh, and you realize you need to get saved uh, and the only one that can save you is Jesus, uh, all you got to do is get in, friend. Uh, you don't have to wait on somebody to come and pick you up and put you in. Uh, you don't have to wait on somebody to lead you in. Uh, hey, when God troubles your water, just get in. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. And then we see the personal invitation. The Bible says in verse number 6, Jesus, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, let me just stop right there and say, Jesus knows where you are. He knows where you've been. He knows all about you. And it's by no accident you're here today because he knew you'd be here today just like he knew that guy would be at that pool that day. huh? Notice Jesus didn't go to everybody, but he went to the one who was ready. Mm. And notice his personal invitation. He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? It's a personal invitation. He didn't say, Will anybody be made whole? He looked at that one individual and said, Will thou be made whole? And when the fellow gave up an excuse, the Lord just said, Take up thy bed, rise, walk, thy, you know, and be whole. If Jesus would have looked across the crowd and said, Behold, they all would have got whole. Hmm? But this fellow heard a personal invitation. And he received it. Say, so how you know? Because he took up his bed and he walked away. He believed what the Lord said. Hmm? That word whole has several meanings. It means healthy. Will you be healthy? Will thou be healthy? Mm -mm. See, if you have a sin condition, you're sin sick. Would you be made whole today? Would you be made healthy from that sin problem you got? Mm -mm. See, because therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things will pass away. Behold, all things will come new. You say, what happens? Well, when Jesus steps in, that sin condition is done away with. And he makes a new creature out of you. He changes your wants, twos, and your desires, and he even changes the direction you're heading. Mm -hmm. And whole also means not damaged or injured. Some of you might be saved by the good grace of God, but you walked in here damaged or injured. You've been hurt. Wilt thou be made whole? Mm -mm. It also means complete. Some of you might be saved, but you hadn't quite got there yet. You say, what are you talking about? You haven't matured in the faith. You've been saved for years, but you're still drinking the milk, the sincere milk of the world, word like little Ella and, and, and little Elizabeth are doing. Uh, we got the two M's there. We got the two E's right here. 
I hate to tell you this, ladies, but E's are greater than M's. All right? Just thought I'd throw that out. Hmm? Huh? Will you be made complete today? You tired of up and down and struggling and no victory, no peace, no joy in your life? It seems like everything, you're pushing it uphill all the time. Wilt thou be made whole? Wilt thou be made clean, complete? It also means the entire amount. I'm glad he didn't just pay for my past sins. He paid for the entire amount. My past sins, my present sins, and my future sins. They've all been paid for. And can I say, he didn't just put the down payment down and expect me to pay the rest. He paid the entire amount. Uh, he washed me from my sins. Uh, I've been made whole in the blood of Jesus Christ. But it means one more thing. And this is to the church. Wilt thou be made whole? It means to be unified. Hmm? You know why we don't have revival? Because we've got too many people going too many different directions. Hmm? We don't have Matthew 6.33 Christianity going on. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. When we all get on that page, revival come. Now I understand that on the day of Pentecost... They'd been praying for 10 days before the Comforter showed up. And can I say, we spend more time in the world than we do in, in, together as a family. And we spend more time yapping than we do praying. And it's going to take a work of God for us all to get unified. I said this in my Sunday school class. I hadn't studied it and didn't plan on saying it, but it just kind of hit me and it was pretty good. It's so good I'm going to say it again now, all right? You say, what about your Sunday school? They were sleeping anyway, so... When David showed up and saw that uncircumcised Philistine blaspheming God and blaspheming the armies of God, he looked around at the army and said, Is there not a cause? He said, What's wrong with y'all? Why don't somebody go down there and take that guy's head off? Even the king wouldn't do it. David said, Bless God, I'll do it. Huh? Can I say, Brother Ray, David didn't show up that day unequipped. He'd spent his entire life on the backside of a sheep herd, sheep field, herding sheep, and looking up the stars, seeing the goodness of God, and writing all them psalms we enjoy about how magnificent he is and that we ought to magnify the Lord and we ought to praise the Lord we ought to sing unto the Lord and all those things. He had uh, uh, sent, spent his life uh, with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And even uh, a bear and a lion showed up and took one of his lambs and he recovered the lamb and he slew the lion and the bear. Yeah. And the Bible said he grabbed the lion by the beard and smote him. Ah, you can call him a kid, you can call him a youth, you can call him whatever you want to call him, but anybody that grabs a lion by the beard, huh? That giant didn't pose any threat to David. Now here's my point. The world has gone crazy for sin. They don't even hide it anymore. I mean, it's on full display. They have uh, crossed the line and they put a battery on their shoulder and they're asking us to knock it off. I don't know about you, I'm sick and tired of their blasphemies. I'm sick and tired of them taking the rainbow. I'm sick and tired of them uh, uh, provoking uh, uh, fornication, adultery, wickedness, lasciviousness. Uh, I'm sick and tired of, of them promoting uh, everything but the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm sick and tired uh, of the woke agenda. I'm sick and tired of the critical race agenda. I'm sick and tired uh, of them telling us Christians uh, that's the way it's going to be and we've got to get in line and we've got to 
like it. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, if we got unified, uh, maybe uh, we could slay a giant or two. Uh, maybe we'd get so much God on us, uh, we'd put them back in the closet. Uh, we'd put them back in the back alleys. Uh, uh, we'd get them run out of town. Uh, wouldn't it be a blessing? We'd have revival so strong. Uh, uh, the beer joints would close. Uh, Cracker Barrel would stop selling beer. Uh, hey, wouldn't it be a blessing? Uh, uh, we could let our kids play in the streets again. Uh, wouldn't it be a blessing? Uh, you wouldn't have to worry about somebody being shot or abducted or raped or maimed. Uh, wouldn't it be a blessing to see the peace of God once again uh, in our community? Uh, hey, uh, what it's going to take uh, is for you and I to realize there is a cause uh, and we all get on the right page uh, and we put Jesus supreme in our life uh, and watch him bring down our giants like he brought down Goliath through David. Huh? Good. Mm. means to be unified. I'm interested in that question. That's a simple question, is it not? Wilt thou be made whole? It's not tough. Is there anybody here cannot understand that? It's a pretty simple question. I'm going to preach very short this morning. I preach longer than I will, unless I haven't. I'm going to preach on simple questions with serious consequences. Simple questions with serious consequences. I, I've just got three questions. Now, wouldn't this story be an absolute tragedy if the guy said nope I just want to hang out here on my bed it would be terrible but some of you have sat under preaching sat under preaching sat under preaching and God has given you exactly what you need for your life and you say nope I'm just going to hang out on my bed uh -oh. well I enjoyed the message but I'm not going to do anything with it you say, preacher, does that happen? Every time we assemble. Amen. Matter of fact, in today's modern Christianity, more people leave offended than they do obedient. Huh? You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. You might as well admit it. I'm going to preach anyway. Huh? You say, preacher, how can you say that? I can say they're offended because they don't change. Amen. Brother hmm? Donald, we're either obedient or disobedient. There is no gray area with God. Sure. So, what are your three questions, Brother Doug? These three questions have serious consequences. First of all, are you saved? I didn't ask you, was you a church member? I didn't ask you if you'd been baptized. I didn't ask you if uh, 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 the Pope kissed your ring. I didn't ask you nothing like that. I ask you, are you saved? Are you saved from your sin? Have you been born again? I'm talking about truly John 3, 3, born again. I say, preacher, I don't understand what you're asking. Well, let me give you some verses. Acts 16, verse 29 Paul and Silas have been in jail. God sends an earthquake, opens the prison. The, prisoners, uh, the prison guard's about to take his life. The Bible says, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now I'm going to stop right here. Baptist preachers make it real difficult to be saved. They, do, they say all kinds of things. They want you jumping through hoops and doing this and that, that and that. You know what makes it so easy to be saved? The Bible. This is what the Bible said about being saved. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Uh, uh, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and what he did on Calvary for your sins. Uh, just believe on him and uh, believe on what he did uh, and that
save you. Uh, uh, friend, are you saved? Uh, uh, Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, uh, for there's none other name under heaven uh, given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, Romans 10, 13, For whomsoever uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, uh, and that not of yourselves. Uh, it is the gift of God, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, Titus 3, 5 says, Not of works of right, not by works of righteousness, uh, which we have done, uh, but according to His mercy, uh, He saved us uh, by the washing of regeneration uh, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, friend, wilt thou be made whole? Uh, are you saved today? Uh, do you know, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh, there was a time when you called on the Lord uh, and asked Him to save you, and He saved you. Uh, can you go back to the place uh, where He saved you? This man could go back to this place uh, next to those porches. Uh, say, that's where I met the Lord. Uh, hey, uh, can you go back to a place? Uh, can you go back to a point in time uh, where God moved in? Uh, hey, where He made a new creature out of you. Uh, where He changed your life. Uh, because Jesus never leaves somebody the way he found him. Uh, this man picked up his bed and walked. Uh, he couldn't walk prior to that. What happened? Jesus happened. Uh, can you go back to a place uh, and point in time when Jesus saved your soul? I didn't ask you. Have you been to an altar? I didn't ask you if you went with some friends down during a meeting to an altar I didn't ask you if you raised your hand and somebody came and grabbed you and took you to an altar I didn't ask you if you filled out a card I'm asking you have you been to Jesus and have you asked him to save you see that's a simple question but it has some very serious consequences because there's only two types of people in here today Saved people and lost people. Saved people uh, have had their sins washed away, their name written down in the book of life. Uh, they've been made citizens of heaven, uh, and they have eternal life. Uh, uh, listen, uh, they're not going to get eternal life. Uh, they have eternal life. Uh, Paul said for a child of God uh, uh, to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord uh, one of these days uh, a child of God's going to just lay off this uh, uh, wardrobe of flesh and take on a glorified body like the Savior uh, in a moment in an instant uh, uh, we're going to go to sleep in this world wake up in glory but those that aren't saved my dear friend you are eternal being as well if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, there is only one hope for your eternity. It's called a place called hell, the lake of fire, a place prepared for the devil and his angels, a place of tormenting where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, a, a place where every day you'll regret that you didn't get saved, every day you'll repent and ask God to save you, but it'll be too late, and for every day you'll pay for your own sins because you wouldn't let Jesus pay for your sins. It has eternal consequences. Are you saved? Are you saved? If not, wilt thou be made whole? Simple questions with serious consequences. Say, preacher, I'm saved. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Are you led by the Spirit? See, a child of God is not saved by God and then left to his own conceits matter of fact Jesus said one of the reasons he had to go away so the comforter could come and the comforter came for our benefit that he might show us the way the Bible says this in Romans eight fourteen: for as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God the preacher, I, I made a profession of faith, but I'm not led of the Spirit. You might want to do some checking up because the Bible said those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And if you're not led by the Spirit, you may not belong to Him. You may have said a prayer, but it didn't reach heaven. Mm -mm. 
Your prayer might have been around, about people around you or getting somebody off your back or you turn over a new leaf. Your prayer might have been all about you. Salvation's all about Him. Are you led by the Spirit? Galatians 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Hmm? Are you walking in the Spirit? Are you a spiritually minded person? Used to we'd say, are you a spiritual person? But now there's a whole religion about spiritualism and it has nothing to do with the Bible or Christ. It has to do with crystals and has to get do with uh, 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 tarot cards and soothsaying and astrologers and all that kind of stuff. And it's all demonic is what that is. You say, Brother Doug, you're meddling. Hang around, I'll meddle some more. People that are walking in the Spirit don't call that meddling. They call that confirmation. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I say, hallelujah. But everybody stops right there. It goes on to say, Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Let me ask you, what are you walking after? It's real easy. What does your mind dwell on? Things of the world or things of the heavenly world? Hmm? Some of you chomping at the bit because you can't wait to get out of here and see who won a goofy race this morning. I'm going to tell you who won it. A nut job. Anybody running with lightning bolts coming all around? I said this to Miss Annette this morning. I told my Sunday school class, so Miss Annette's going to hear it again. They're going to hear it again. God gave them a beautiful day, and they ran on Friday. He gave them another beautiful day, and they ran yesterday. But those that don't believe God, they don't trust in God, they don't know God, today he allowed it to rain, and they cussed him. Because he had it rain not knowing that this is the Lord's day and we're to keep it holy. That didn't cost you anything either. So you're meddling again. Well, what do you do with this verse? Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you're saved and you've got a sin problem because you're not walking in the Spirit. Now Listen. If you're saved, you're still going to deal with sin because you live in this body. But I said if you have a sin problem where sin consumes you, it might be a bad habit that has you under control because you're not walking in spirit. It might be a bad communication. Even though the Bible says let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, you might not be walking in the spirit. It might be a, a, a lust problem. You might have a real problem lusting after things. Might be lusting after the opposite sex. Might be lusting after Corvettes. Might be lusting after a ball team. Might be lusting after something else. But you've got a lust problem. Hmm? Uh -uh, it's because you're not walking in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the desires of that flesh. Are you listening? Huh? By the way, if we love the world and not the Lord, we are at enmity against God. Mm -mm. You can't be the friend of God and the friend of the world, friend. Mm -mm. Can I say John 16, 13 says, How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. The comforter was given to guide us into truth. That's why we're to walk in the Spirit. That's why we're to be led in the Spirit. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. Now listen, you might step in a mud puddle, but if you're a, a, a spiritually minded, you'll get your foot out. You'll get it cleansed off. First John 1, 9 cleansed off. You'll get back on the path and you'll let the Spirit lead you. Hmm? When you're not led of the Spirit, you, get, you step in a mud puddle, you kind of like it, so you get down and you waller in it for a while. Hmm? Then God has to chastise you to get you back on the path. Hmm? Third John said this, verse 3. I'm talking about being guided into truth. This is what he said. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee 
even as thou walkest in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. You know what pleases the Lord? When we're obedient and we walk and are led by the Spirit and we walk in truth. Hmm? Huh? Wilt thou be made whole? Hmm? Are you saved? Preacher, I'm saved. Wonderful. Are you led of the Spirit? Got real quiet there. Hmm? Hmm? Let me ask you one more question. Simple question. Are you saved? Simple. Simple question. Are you led to the Spirit? There are serious consequences. The last question again is simple, but it has serious consequences. What's the final question, preacher? Are you ready to meet the Savior? Friend, he's coming. If you can't look around and see that we are in the last days, I mean, perilous times, and he uh, said, shall come? No, they're here. Amen. Everything he named is here. Everything that the Lord told uh, the Jews in Matthew 24 that would happen uh, uh, to, during the Great Tribulation, all, all that's happening now. Amen. Everything's ready. Jesus is just waiting on the last person to get saved, whoever that is. We are living on the mercies of God that sinners could be saved. That's what we're doing right now. Are you ready to meet him? Hmm? Churches are congregated all over the globe. Some, somebody might be the last one in today. We might be home. Are you ready to meet him? Hmm? 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. The great apostle Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul said, I'm ready. Are you ready? He said, well, he's headed to a chopping block. Even the more. He was ready. Huh? And friend, have you seen some of these politicians? Might be more of us headed to the chopping block. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Savior? Hey, some of us might not meet him in the air during the rapture. Some might go before then. Are you ready to meet him? Car wrecks happen every day. I read a new statistic this past week. More people today are killed by people who are texting and driving than those who are drinking and driving. You know how much I'm on the road everywhere I go. People are looking at that goofy phone. And they pass laws in every state that they've got to be hands-free now. They say if somebody's reading a text message, it takes them 100 yards to stop. That's the length of a football field. I try to leave a two-second distance because back when they taught me to drive back in the Stone Ages, you know, me and Fred Flintstone learned at the same time. They said leave a two-second distance between you and the person in front of you. That'll give you ample time to stop if they have to have an emergency stop. Well, you can't do that anymore because all the morons have come up and cut in front of you. I'd never get anywhere if I left two seconds because I wouldn't get out of Florence. I'd have to just have to keep slowing down in order because everybody just pulls in front of you. Huh? You say, what do you do about that? That's what the horn's for. I had a horn cussing lady out here on the roundabout the other day. Miss Nett was with me. We was in my nice little shiny convertible. Coming around the roundabout. I was in the center coming around like I was supposed to and this gal was in the right lane and she wasn't slowing down and Miss Ned hates it because I never slow down and it's always on her side so what happened I horn cussed her and then I got I'm in the right lane turning right yeah but back up a little bit and look at that sign that says yield if you wouldn't have been looking at your phone you just saw yield hmm? say brother Doug was you going to slow down nope what if she'd have hit you? I'd have got one like Doug's. That's what would happen if she'd have hit me. Huh? ZR1, Ligenfelter, we'd went all out. Huh? Because I, I would have made sure Christian had to come cut me out of that car. I might, not, I might have got a little bruise on my toe, but, man, they'd heard me screaming like I was dying. Huh? <laughs> I'm dying until I get that big one. Huh? Friend, we don't know when we're going to go. You put your keys in your car, you get out on that road, there are people who don't know how to drive. Lexi's driving now. 
we hadn't got over Chloe driving, and now we got Lexi driving. God help us all. Am I serious? Oh, uh, those are good kids, but they're still driving a six thousand pound vehicle. You know, and they're trying to look cool doing it. So how you know? I was young one time, huh? You don't know what's happening out there. Can I say? You can be at Kroger's buying some ice cream. And there are idiots going in all over the place shooting people with guns. Let me just pause right here and say, how come if there's a shooting in Cinco, California, it's on our news? Well, they're trying to tell everybody how bad guns are. That's why. Huh? Let me remind you, guns don't kill people. People kill people. And if you're going to use their philosophy, I know how to read, so therefore I'm a brain surgeon or something, you know? It's, it's goofy. But people are going in places and shooting people. And I've got the reason. They're full of the devil. Huh? They have opened up the gateway for the devil to possess them and tell them to go shoot people. Can I say the Lord doesn't tell us to go shoot people? There are times I wish He would, but He doesn't. We're to live peaceably among all men. Hmm? So we find that there are demonic people out there. Miss Annette and I ate at uh, Potbelly's the other day, and this real nice lady took our sandwich order and I look up and the gal behind the cash register she just kept staring and not staring like that guy's odd looking I got that a lot no she had an evil stare about her and she was marked up very demonically and I told Miss Annette and she was very rude very very rude uh, when, when she had to take our money and wouldn't give us our crackers or napkins or nothing, didn't tell us where the cups were, and it's a good thing I've eaten there a lot. But I mean, just rude. Just, but she just kept staring. Every time I looked up, I felt somebody looking at me. I look around, she's staring at me. I told her that one of two things either she thinks I'm a cop, because I get that sometimes, or she knew that I belonged to Jesus. Hmm. I'm telling you, there's some evil people in this world. Uh, the Lord's about to come back, and the devil's pulled out all the stops. Are you ready to meet him? Hmm? The Bible says in Revelation 19, 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Are you ready? To be ready for the marriage supper means we go through the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible says that every one of us are going to give an account of ourselves to God. Are you ready? Are you ready? I read this story. I found it very interesting. I'll close with this. James L. Kraft of the Kraft Cheese family. Everybody's heard of Kraft Cheese? Everybody's got macaroni and cheese out of a box by Kraft Cheese. James L. Kraft, back in the day, was scheduled to speak in a conference at San Francisco. It was published in his hometown that he'd be speaking at this big conference, and one night he got a phone call, and on the other end was a saddened, destitute voice. And a lady had called him and pleaded with him that when he got to San Francisco, would he please go to Alcatraz and visit her son? Her son was in there serving a life sentence. Said that she had sent him money, she'd sent him letters, she'd sent him cakes, she'd sent him candy, but he never once had responded to her. He said, Mr. Kraft, in your travels, would you go by Alcatraz and just tell my son that I love him and to please send me a note? Mr. Kraft agreed to. Once arriving in San Francisco after speaking at the conference, he was 
true to his word, he went to Alcatraz, and he actually knew the warden at Alcatraz. He sat in the warden's office and uh, relived and rehearsed some days gone by and enjoyed his fellowship. And, and uh, the warden told him, he said, the boy that you're here to visit, he's in the visitor's room. He said, now take your time, Mr. Craft. There's no hurry. Just head down this uh, steel corridor right here, and uh, the guards will show you the way. He said that he started down that corridor, and he was headed down the corridor, and he come up on where there was going to be a turn to the right, and he turned to the right. Right after he turned to the right, a big hand reached out and grabbed his chest and pulled him up close and, and began to uh, uh, frisk him, and he told him, be silent and stand still. And when he gathered himself, he realized it was a big police officer, and, and, and about the time he realized that, it was over, and the police officer said, uh, Mr. Kraft, you can go on your way. You're clean. Well, it irritated Mr. Kraft, and he, and, he, and he spoke in a rough voice back to him. He said, I'm always clean. Well, the police officer smiled. He said, no. By being clean, I mean that you have nothing on you that you're not supposed to have when you go into the visitor's room. And Mr. Kraft started to walk away, and, and he turned around and says, how do you know what I have on you? He said, I just checked your pockets. He says, well, what do I have in my pockets? He said, in your right trousers pocket, you have your car keys. In your left trousers pocket, you have a small amount of change. And in your right jacket pocket, you have a steel eyeglass container. He said, you can go on your way. Mr. Kraft turned, and he headed down the corridor, and there was another bend coming up, and the thought hit him. What if that had been Jesus that grabbed him and said, I want to look and see if you're clean? At that thought, Mr. Kraft took the hat off his head, he bowed his head, and he asked God, God, would you reveal in my heart, or would you look in my heart and reveal unto me, am I clean before thee? You see, that's a question that needs to be asked by everybody. Sinners, if you're not clean, you're going to die and go to hell. But Jesus will clean you today if you'll come to him. Christians, you ought to ask God, am I clean? Am I walking by the Spirit? Am I living the Bible Christian life? Lord, if you came back today, would I be ready to meet you? Am I clean? before you today you see friend the heart is deceitful it's so wicked we don't even know our own heart but the Lord does and he can reveal the things to you you didn't even know was in there will you ask him today if you're clean simple questions serious consequences are you saved are you led of the spirit are you ready to meet the Savior? Let's all stand this morning. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they get ready for the invitation, let's pray. Father, we bless you. I'm thankful for that day you troubled my waters. And Lord, when I called upon you, you saved me. Lord, I got a new life in Christ. Lord, you've been faithful. And you've been a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Lord, there's been many days I've failed you, but you have never failed me. Lord, help us to always seek to be spirit-led. And Lord, help us to be ready to meet the Savior. Lord, I pray now starting in me and in everyone in here this morning, you'd reveal whether or not we're clean. God, speak to hearts. God, send revival to your church that we can take on the giant of this world. God, if there's anybody lost without the Lord, trouble their waters. God, show them their lost condition and help them to come and be made whole today. God, speak to hearts now. Glorify your namesake. And Father, we'll not fail to bless you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.